Um, George Beasley, um, sculptor from Atlanta, Georgia. I've been with Georgia State University for over 40 years. Uh, retired, but still actively involved with supporting my own institution, um, sculpture in general. And our other life on the other side of the Atlantic is at the Scottish Sculpture Workshop in Aberdeenshire. I've been with them since off and on and now f all the time since 1982. Uh, so that keeps us busy, keeps us moving. <laughs> I say us, my wife Judy and I. Uh, she's been my part, art partner for years. She's a ceramics artist, and uh, we went to art school together and have been working together ever since. Quite fortunate to be invited to do a work with the Fort Wayne Museum, and uh, it involves one of the perf so called performance furnaces that I do. Uh, they're iron events. A, along with the, uh, an artist that I met uh, a couple years ago from Berlin, uh, Suzanne Rohr, and we got talking, at, I think in Scotland possibly, uh, about the idea of maybe doing this exhibition together. And it, originally the um, performance furnaces were kind of like um, party pieces after the, after the studio work. And gradually, more and more, they became uh, more important. And then I started doing drawings and uh, castings that became narrative of the past event. And so they became more interdependent. And uh, in this exhibition, we'll bring artifacts of the poor. And, and that will be uh, in relation to the more formal works that we have on the walls. First of all, I started with the idea that you can make a furnace out of anything. It's basically a cylinder that holds heat for a certain length of time while you make the melt. And then it was kind of like, well, what if you make the cylinder out of the wrong things? You know, what if you uh, use wood, highly flammable? And we tried it, and it becomes very dramatic. Sometimes it's a race against time to get the metal out before the furnace burns down. This one we plan to take down pretty immediately because it's in a very accessible public park and we don't want anybody hurt on it. A good start is really important. Find the right piece. Uh, we walked through the woods, selected uh, poles that uh, had branches at the top in such a way that we could notch the structure together. And the first thing we did was hold up a a fork-shaped piece and brought another timber into that. I was um, impressed by how, how well it came together. It seems like we picked up the right part at the right time. The right branch was always there, yeah. the right shape. It was kind of amazing. It, it came together quickly. Yeah, and I take my cue from birds. I mean, when they're building a nest, they don't have a blueprint, but they do. They have a, a, a built in their mind how this thing has to happen, and they're flying around picking up sticks and twigs and stuffing them into just the right places. Oh, I would do the same thing, just rely on instinct and, oh, I need a longer piece. No, that one over there, and we stick it in and screw it down. And as the shape that we need is built, the demands of the how, what has come before start telling us what we need to do next. Um, we start realizing the shape of the vas basic vessel form inside by the way the, the outside twigs are forming. We know we need a flat platform, so we start cutting what we put in that's in the wrong place out and adding th other things in the right place. And so you, it's sort of like drawing, you know, you keep working till it's right. As we're building the structure, I'm already looking at a, a, a circular weaving of branches because I know that the furnace needs to be a vessel form and I'm working from the inside proportions out. A, inside being a layer of, um, of a mix of clay, sand, uh, and various other refractory materials to a to a thickness of about two inches, roughly. The bottom of the furnace will receive the iron. The melting takes place in the center of the furnace. Above it, 
is where the metal comes in. Inside the furnace, it's layered of coke, which is the fuel of the furnace and also the matrix that holds the furnace up. At the central point, forced air is blown in. We actually ignite it with an external torch until we get up to temperature. It hits that hot coke and it combusts at such a high temperature, melting the iron above it. The molten iron falls down and occupies the spaces below between the larger cokes in that bottom vessel. When that is full, it's our job in the front to extract it, and there's a plug in the front, which we chisel out, and that's when all the molten iron comes out. That's the exciting part. This time we're going to make the metal go down through notched bamboo tubes. As it goes through, all these flames will shoot up, and it also makes it fire flute along the line as the metal's running through. They're all unique in the sense that in the sense that I'm not totally sure what I'm doing until I start. You know, I have a general outline, a certain idea. I look at the site beforehand, and I'm influenced by the materials around me, the landscape, how it's going to relate, maybe maybe framed by the trees. And this time of the year, the leaves are off, are just beginning to come out, so we see the river. It took a more vertical stance. Uh, I think because of its location, stands more as a like kind of formal object. It's, it's very, very frontal. I think there's a bit of like uh, magic in that we carry iron, you know, that kind of, that goes back to, again, prehistory of those that can make metal, those that carry iron. There's a kind of... Um, uh, Traditionally, the smith, the shaman, there's, there's all that kind of thing that comes into it. I don't know what else. It, it, is, it is entertaining. I mean, that's what, what, why I'm, the first attraction to me is when I walked into uh, the foundry fort at Cranbrook uh, when I was applying to the school, and I saw all these people running around pouring massive amounts of iron, and I how on, how do they know what to do? What are they doing? It's just kind of amazing. And uh, at that time, they were tapping out of a furnace that tapped out 1,000 pounds of iron every 30 minutes and handling that into major sculpture. Wow, this is great. This is kind of incredible stuff. As a sculpture media controlled by the artists is a very new phenomenon. Uh, started at Cranbrook Academy of Art in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, under Julia Schmidt, who was the first sculptor to bring art, or excuse me, iron into the studio as a working tool. Until that point, what little bit of sculpture done in iron was done in commercial foundries. Mm -hmm. But again, iron being kind of a, the lesser or baser of metals in some people's mind, subservient to bronze, well, we kind of look at it the other way. Bronze is that kind of pretty glittery thing that uh, has no depth. 